Home Assistant, Failsafe, MUM with Zigbee, Power Distribution, its own network, LTE backup, and much more. All of this in this form factor here. How it works, I'll show you as always, after the intro. Enjoy. Finding a place for your own smart home components can sometimes be really difficult. Most people use or would naturally like to use a rack for this. However, not everyone has the space at home to accommodate such a huge monstrosity, like in my case, for example. Accordingly, in this video, I want to show you handy how I assembled a mini server rack, what components I was able to fit in there, and essentially just make the point that theoretically a server rack at home would be possible for most of you. But let's start right from the beginning. What do you actually need in a smart home rack? Of course, this is very, very individual and probably can't be answered in a general way. However, I simply tried to push the whole thing a little bit to the extreme to show that it's not as far-fetched as it initially sounds. First of all, about the server rack itself, perhaps, we have the Rackmate T0, a for you 10 inch server rack. So if we hold a tape measure next to it, you can see how small the whole thing actually is. Still, I find it to be an extremely brilliant Buddha rack because it offers a lot of possibilities and also has very, very good craftsmanship due to the aluminum parts. Everything you need for assembly is actually included, why? Including screws, uh, tools, and even mm, top handles. The case is open at the front and back, and components can also be installed from both sides. On both sides, we have semi-transparent plastic panels and on the top as well. However, we have holes here for air circulation. As already mentioned, top handles are also included in the delivery. You can optionally screw them in e if you want. However, since I am often on the go and like to have a smart home set up with me, in case a new home assistant update comes out, I have actually screwed them in and have used them several times. So I can really say that you can take this thing with you and transport it easily. But let's move on to the components that I have installed inside. Of course, each of these components requires a lot of power. Accordingly, I wanted to organize everything very neatly here and have the ability to connect to the network and power in various places with as few cables as possible. Therefore, I have installed a four socket power strip here, which can supply the entire rack with power. In addition, uh, three different thin clients are powered as well as a switch and a router, which are each powered via USB. And because I used a USB hub here, I theoretically have another power strip available. So if I were to travel with a laptop, I could theoretically connect both a USB-C and a remaining power connection. I have equipped the thin clients with various software. We have an Unraid server, a Proxmox server, and finally an Ubuntu server. Theoretically, it would also be possible uh, to create a Proxmox high availability cluster from this, thus running a failsafe home assistant. I have already shown how this works in another video. I'll link it for you up here in case you'd like to watch it. To ensure the thin clients could be installed as space efficiently as possible in the case, I installed a separate out rack rail for each of the bottom two. The advantage of such a small rack is, of course, that you can easily 3D print components for it. With my larger server rack, I had to split the parts before 3D printing so that I could print them in two pieces and then screw them together afterward. Here, all the components actually fit one-to-one -one on the 3D printer and can be printed directly as a single piece, which is super practical. I completely customized the bottom thin client to fit the thin client itself. The advantage is that due to its square design, it was relatively easy to design. For the second thin client, I put in a bit less effort and printed a quasi-universal mount that resembles a standard rack rail. However, anyone who wants to save on buying a rack rail can simply download the files and uh, print a rack rail themselves. For the third thin client, I decided to simply use the supplied rack rail, which is also made of aluminum and is logically much more stable. Since the thin client is so small, I was also able to fit the power supply and an additional power supply there. As you can see, we've already used up 80% of the space. And now I still need to somehow accommodate the network cabling and the last power supply. Accordingly, I sat down again and designed a completely custom rail. This accommodates a Zigbee stick, all the network cables, and finally the remaining switch that I wanted to install here. 
And with that, we've uh, at least taken care of the power part. Now, of course, the network part is still open. And I wanted to keep as many options open as possible so that my unit is universally usable on the go and can handle any network environment accordingly. I clicked through many or router options. For me, it was at least clear that I wanted to use one from the brand Glynit, as I simply liked their software the best. The routers run their own interface, which is super intuitive and very, very easy to use, but offers plenty of options, allowing you to use it both as a Wi-Fi client and as your own router. You can connect it to an existing Wi-Fi network. You can integrate it into another network via LAN or, and this is the special feature here, also connected via LTE with up to two SIM cards, thus providing a virtually fail-safe network. If the LAN or even the Wi-Fi connection should drop, an LTE backup can be activated, ensuring that this server rack is practically always connected to the internet. If all these settings are not sufficient, the router also runs what is known as OpenWRT, um, an open source operating system, one where creativity truly knows no bounds. Here you can really work your way down to the console level and make all the settings manually, if you wish to do so. The GLinit interface essentially runs on top of OpenWRT. This caters to people who want to delve deeply and set up their own routing tables, but also those who simply want a very basic travel router. Additionally, it is possible to use this router to create your own VPN server or VPN client making this setup suitable for connecting a second location. For example, I could also connect my laptop to this router while on the go or surf securely in hotel networks. If one of the computers in this rack crashes, I also have a KVM installed. With it, I can remotely access this computer, view the monitor output, operate the mouse and keyboard, and if all else fails and I decide to switch to a different OS, man, I can also load my own ISO images via the KVM and completely reinstall it from afar. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe even found it helpful. If so, I would really appreciate a rating. All the parts I installed in this rack are linked again below in the video description and for all loyal viewers. You'll find an Amazon voucher displayed here. If you're the first to watch this video, you can redeem it right away. If you're watching this video later, then please feel free to click on subscribe and help me improve this statistic a bit. I thank each of you for watching, and then I would say we'll see each other in the next video. Until then, take care and goodbye.